The, uh, nobody, nobody will come back. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, all right, well, we're, we're continuing with 1 Peter chapter 4. I'll remind everybody um, that, uh, that we're doing Summer Book Club um, coming up, and what we're going to do is The Great Divorce, if you're interested in that. Because it's Judy borrowed the book and she and she's like and she's like I, I just I don't I don't get it you know like it. Uh, so, and I was like oh well maybe that would be a good study then you know because it, it's you're like you're no dummy Judy and Thank so you. you're no dummy and so I'm like oh maybe maybe because it's one of my favorite books it's one of these books that has been very formative to me and I haven't read it in a while so we're gonna do that um, so here's the schedule for that. Um, we are going to do today and we're gonna do next week and then we're gonna be off for two weeks. So hopefully I can finish up this, which it shouldn't be a problem. Finish up first Peter in uh, two weeks. So this week, next week, and then we're off for two weeks and then we'll start the, the book club, which is this time slot, the Bible study. So it's The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis. Um, I'll start putting emails out and stuff like that for anyone who wants to be involved in that and we'll probably do something like a chapter a week um type of thing uh it's a short book yeah it's not a long book it's not a long book so the uh but it, it's kind of it's fascinating and it really lends itself for discussion it really lends itself for discussion so um so i figured i figured we'd do that i think that'd be something different and fun it seems like people are kind of excited about it too all right. So today, though, we're continuing with uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, since we have a bunch of people in here today that are, that are kind of new, I'm reading out of the NIV translation. You're welcome to read out of whatever translation you would like to read out of. Um, if, if what yours says says something uh, quite a bit different or more interesting wording or something like that, just, just uh, let me know, and we will uh, we'll, we'll kind of go through that. Um, Reading from multiple different translations is a good activity. There is not one that is that is like the one that you should read out of. Like that. That's that's not that's not the way it, that's not the way it works. So um, they they try their best to read out of these different translations. So First Peter chapter four, First Peter, the stuff that's around is right before Revelation at the end after Hebrews. And so that's kind of, that's kind of where it is. All right. So first Peter chapter four, um, just to quick uh, catch, catch up on what we were talking about before. Um, it's important to remember who is writing first Peter. All right. It's important to remember that fact. So first Peter is written by Peter, of course. And what's, what is Peter most famous for? denying Jesus, right? And also, anytime Jesus said anything about suffering or anything like that, he always pulled away and he said, no, 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 Jesus, this isn't the way it is, right? So when, when in 1 Peter, Peter's letter that he's writing starts talking about suffering and all of that, that that's a big deal. We see that Peter has changed a lot. And, and how he is talking about all that. The other thing to, to know about First Peter is he is Hebrew. He is Hebrew, Hebrew, right? He grew up. He went all to the Hebrew schools and like you know all that, all the good stuff. Like he did all of that, and um, so everything that he's saying is coming from a Hebrew perspective. Was like, he a scribe? He wasn't a scribe. He was not no, he was. He was, he was a fisherman. He was like, like he's like, he like works for the DOT. You know, he's, he works for, he, he, he's got a, like a good, like working with his hands job or, or he'd be like middle management somewhere at Tropicana or something like that. You know, like that's like that, that is who Peter is. That, that's, that is what's going on on there. Like he's, he's nothing much, but you know, and so, so he, but just like any, anyone else that would have been steeped in the faith, they would have understood what it was. You know, they, they would have, they would, especially Hebrews, they, they were very, very close to their lineage and, and many still are, many still are. So, 
So that, that is Peter. So at the end of chapter three, chapter three and chapter four kind of roll in together. But at the end of chapter three, he starts talking about baptism and, and things like that. He's, he's bringing in this idea. He's bringing in all these Jewish notions of the faith and how we uh, receive holiness. I'm quoting something right there, which you're going to see in a second. He's bringing all those ideas into this now thing that we now celebrate in baptism and, and see that it is cleansing us for the future. And what he's saying is very important about um, <clears throat> suffering and love. Like the, the, big, the big thing that's being said is because we uh, realize <laughs> that suffering will happen to us, the thing, things that are bad things that will happen, we are free to love in that. So I'm going to read a little bit of chapter four, the beginning of it. We read this last week, but we're, we'll, we'll hit it again, and then we're going to watch a video. So chapter four, verse one. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. Now notice what he's saying there. Whoever suffers, you, you, I think you kind of see sin for what it is. When you're, when you're completely opposed to suffering, I think you're willing to play with sin in any way, right? Like, so that's, I think that's kind of what he's saying there. As, as a result, they did not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless and wild living, and they heap abuse onto you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead so that they may be judged according to the human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. We went over this last week, didn't we? This part? Yeah, 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 we kind of we kind of hit it. So um, then he says, the end of all things are near. We're going to go to verse 11. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober in mind so that you may pray, and above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. If anyone speaks, they should also, uh, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides them so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be glory, power, and forever more. All right, so I wanted to read that whole section and we'll watch uh, this video that's from the Bible Project. It's on sacrifice and the atonement. And I think it helps us see what, the background to what Peter is writing about here and how he most likely is viewing holiness and, um, and uh, purity and, and all of that. And I think it helps us see what he's talking about. So here we go. We all long for the world to be good, for people to live in peace, act with love and justice, but there's a problem. Something compels us humans to constantly wreak havoc and destruction instead, and we call this evil. And from the Bible's point of view, evil ruins things in at least two ways. There's a direct effect of our evil, like when someone steals from another person, they've created injustice. Hmm. You know, therefore, you know, they owe something to make it right. But there's another indirect effect of evil, because they've also ruined the environment of the relationship, creating a lack of trust, there's emotional damage. It's like vandalism, and they need to make that right too. Now, many people believe, hey, God is good. He should be the one to just get rid of all the evil in the world. But let's be honest. I mean, the evil that I see everywhere out there, it's the same evil that's inside of me. 
we have all contributed and, and we keep doing it. And so this kind of puts us in a bind. If God's going to rid the world of evil, he'll have to get rid of us. And this is what's so remarkable about the story of the Bible. This God is so good that not only is he going to rid the world of evil, he's going to do it without destroying humanity. So how is he going to do that? Well, early in the story of the Bible, we're introduced to this practice of animal sacrifice, which I know it seems weird to us, but for the Israelites, it was a very powerful symbol of God's justice and of his grace. So remember, I'm a contributor to the evil that's in the world. I should be removed. But God is allowing this animal's life to be a substitute. It's symbolically dying in my place. And the biblical word for this is atonement, which means to cover over someone's death. But there's a second part to this ritual. Remember, evil also causes this relational vandalism. And in the Bible, this idea is described as polluting or defiling the land and making it unclean. So the priest would symbolically wash away the vandalism by sprinkling the animal's blood in different parts of the temple. So the animal's blood is cleaning things? Well, remember, this is a symbol, and it's a symbol that we're not used to. The blood represents life. And the sprinkling of the blood is this representation of how God is cleaning away these indirect consequences of evil in their community. In the Bible, this process is called purification. And so the temple and the land now become a clean space where God and his people can live together in peace. So this ritual makes things right between Israel and God. And more than that, the Israelites experience God's love and his grace through these symbols. And by being forgiven, ideally, this would compel them to become people of love and grace too. Right, that's the ideal, but it wasn't always happening. Right. So the prophet Isaiah, for example, he talks a lot about this. He opens his book by saying that the continual sacrifices of the Israelites had become meaningless because they were also allowing great evil in their midst, ignoring the poor and the oppressed. Even the Israelite kings were distorting justice. Hmm. But Isaiah looked forward to a day when a new king from the line of David would come and deal with evil, but in a surprising way. The king would become a servant and not just serve, but also suffer and die for the evil committed by his own people. And his life would be offered as a sacrifice. This is the promise Jesus believed he was fulfilling. He's the king of Israel suffering and dying on the cross. In fact, Jesus himself used Isaiah's words when he said that he came to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. And that word ransom refers to a sacrifice of atonement. And so all over the New Testament, we hear about how Jesus' death was an atoning sacrifice for us. It covered the debt that humans owe God for contributing to all of the evil and death in this world. But the New Testament authors also talk about Jesus' death as providing purification. And so we hear about Jesus' blood as a symbol of his life, having this ability to wash away the vandalism that evil has caused in us and around us, so we can now live at peace with God. So that's the meaning behind Jesus' death. But there's more to the story. Yeah, the New Testament makes this powerful claim that Jesus' death was not final. He rose from the dead. And so he's the sacrifice who broke the power of death and evil, which means that he lives on, offer his life to anyone who will accept it. He is the perfect sacrifice to which all the previous sacrifices were pointing all along. So because of Jesus, the early Christians stopped participating in the ritual of animal sacrifice. But they were given new rituals. There are two that Jesus taught his followers to perform. The first is called baptism. Just as Jesus died, so going into the water becomes this personal connection you now have to his death. And in coming out of the water, you, so to speak, come back to life with Jesus. So baptism is the sacred ritual that joins your story to Jesus' death and his resurrection. The second ritual is called the Lord's Supper, which is a reenactment of Jesus' last meal with his disciples. And he used bread and wine to portray his coming death as a sacrifice. And so now followers of Jesus, they take the bread and the cup regularly to remember and to participate in the power of Jesus' death and in his life. So these rituals, they remind us of God's love and encourage us to live a life of love and grace. But they do more than that. They connect us to a new life source. The very power that brought Jesus back from the dead is the same power that can deal with the evil in our own lives 
and transform us into people who lead lives of love and peace. Hi, this is Tim. And this is John. We believe I'm back on. Got to turn the crowd back on. All right, here we go. So, so thinking back now to how Peter talked about baptism and, and how he starts talking about suffering, how he starts talking about suffering and, and he's, he's connecting kind of that suffering idea um, to the beginning of chapter four that we were that we were watching there, that we were listening, uh, that we read there in like chapter three, for you have, you have spent enough time in the past doing what the pagans choose to do, living in debauchery and all, all that. He's, he's connecting that idea there. Now in that video there, which is not connected to first Peter, you know, it's not a video about first Peter or anything like that. They have one of those, but it shows you their Old Testament idea of what sacrifice meant and what it was for. And you can see Peter is emulating that idea that the sacrifice was meant to come and purify you so that you, then you were free to now do good works. Like, I, I don't know if you saw that at the beginning of that video, that that's going to, and then they said like the kings and everyone, they just bypassed, you know, that's like Jesus parable of the, of the good Samaritan, right? They just, they just bypassed over people and, and did all that. This is what Peter, Peter is using that same teaching here. And he is now connecting it to baptism and Jesus, same way the video did. Like, so he, he is connecting, it's doing that same thing where you are, because you now die with Jesus in baptism, because you die with that means that and, and you are risen from that, whatever sufferings, whatever hurt that we come across now, we now can rise again out of it. We know that that's not the thing that's going to hold us down. So we're completely to free to help those around us. And does that help us, the helping those around us, does that mean anything for our salvation? No, we already were raised, you know, in the, in the, in the life of Jesus. And we look forward to the day coming soon when that will be completely done. And we, and we died to him already, but we're, we're just acting out in, in the grace and love of the coming kingdom of God. So that's like a big idea that's being held there. And what P, by Peter going from baptism into talking about suffering and then kind of being a part of the world, but going a different way, he's connecting it to this Jewish arc of redemption that's kind of always been there. So that's, um, so before we kind of get into this a little bit more, did, did anyone have any thoughts or anything on that? Uh, does that make sense? Is it confusing? Yeah, yeah, Cheryl? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the, he's using he's using that to be inclusive to a lot of the streams of Christianity because it's uh, the, I mean you have Catholics, you have us, and you have a couple of the liturgical brands of Christianity that that use the word sacrament. But there's a lot out there that that they'll they they'll just hear sacrament and close off whatever he's saying. So that's. So that, that's kind of, he was also using symbolic language a lot there. That was also to be inclusive of the different streams of, of Christianity. And so like, he's, he's using that to not turn off people from hearing what he's actually saying. So, so that's, that's kind of what's going on in, in that video. Um, I, I guess I could, the guy who puts those videos together is a guy named Tim Mackey. And, um, and so I, I, I guess I would be like a, a disciple of Tim Mackey type, type of thing, <laughs> to, to like all, all that stuff. Um, it, it's, and I would say I would, I would connect Tim Mackey to other people that I'm also disciples of. And he, I guess he would say he was a disciple of that, but he's had this amazing ability to be able to communicate 
very complex ideas in a very a form that's easy to understand. Right, and quick. You know, and quick. Yeah, that's like a five minute video. Right. Like well, the thing I noticed in the very first parts of it where all these letters are floating around. Yeah. He said evil, and I looked at the letters which I never connected before. Yeah. Life or live. Yeah. You know, you turn the, the letters around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's evil. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> How could you build a story? So you moved it. They're, they're so good at visuals with that with that video house there. They're so good with visuals and moving around and it, it kind of in English that works really good where we can where we can move around our life and make it into evil, right? So that's 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 good there. Um, so that that's kind of one of the main things I want I wanted you to see. So as we go a little further into this, um, we'll we'll look at it a little bit little bit more here. So verse one of chapter four again. So therefore, since Christ suffered in the body, arm yourselves with the same attitude because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. It's an important idea there. That's an important idea. And, and I think what he's saying, and, and we gotta remember who Peter was. He always viewed suffering as a thing that you would, would mean that God was done with you, like the favor of God never rested in you type of, type of thing, even though that was never part of the Jewish story. It was never part of it. That's something that came in during the Maccabees and was, was probably always there. It's, you know, it's, it's in a lot of our strains now too. But he, he's, I think what he's saying now is like, no, no, when, when you realize that you take on a death like Jesus, you, you can get through anything you can get you can get through anything and 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 i think that's what he means by how he's that is done with sin is anyone else's translation translate that differently that done with sin that verse one is it is it translated differently in an interesting way or is it basically the same it's thing pretty much the same since jesus went through everything you're going to go through and more learn to think like him Think of your suffering as a weaning from an old sinful habit of always expecting to get your own way. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, then you'll be able to live out your days free to pursue what God wants instead of being uh, tyrannized by what you want. Is that um, is that the message? The message. Okay. Yeah. I was like, yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 So that's so oh. so it's which is which is good. But so and. And notice what it said there at the end, like that you will not be terrorized by doing what you want to do. Yeah, but terrorized, interesting way of putting it. Um, I always be, have to be careful kind of how I word this. Um, a lot, well, all right, at the, big, at the beginning of the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic, when we closed everything down, um, there were a lot of, ideas being thrown out like just which which is fine and all that stuff but a lot a lot of people just their their first reactions to stuff um they think that's what they want but but they don't really know anything else besides just what's in front of them uh steve jobs is famous for that for saying that he goes people don't know what they want like that that's people people don't know what they want like he goes, when we're at the forefront of technology, people have no imagination to what can be done, type, type of thing like that. But people have narrow minds. They yeah, have yeah. Really a foresight. It, and so, so like, I, I, it made me think of that when we went into the, the pandemic, like I was like, all right, we're kind of free to do whatever. What, and, and what I said, it's like, what's important is that people, when they're at home, they feel like they're here which means what we were doing in here was completely different than what we normally do. But at home, it felt the same. And so, so that's, and when you started coming in person, things still feel different. And we're trying to have that attitude between the two, but a, a lot of times, and, and I think that's what he's talking about, like the suffering of, or, or what was the specific wording and how he put it? I liked how he put it right there at the end of verse three. Thank then you. you'll be able to live out your days free to pursue what God wants instead of being 
Mary. But before that, the like the treachery of living or something like that. Since Jesus went through everything, yeah, you're going through and more. Learn to think like him. Yeah. Think of your suffering as a weaning from the old sinful habit of always expecting to get your own way. Yeah, yeah. So so that's so so look at this. I like how that's Eugene Peterson. Uh, is who translated the message. And um, back in my more zealous days of Christianity, I realized like Eugene Peterson, all that stuff. But he has such, anything I see from Eugene Peterson now, he has such a gracefulness to, to his way of moving and all that stuff. I really like Eugene Peterson now. Um, he's, he's, he's getting very old. I don't think he died yet. But he's he's close. <laughs> he's close if he hasn't. The um uh, the but but um but he but that idea of that now that we may have felt any kind of suffering, any kind of hurt, we can now be weaned from living away from all these other things. And he starts listing them off that um that you used to do all these things. You used to do all these things like. Um, you know, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, detestable idolatry. And, um, you know, he, he mentions like you used to be part of all, all of these things. Then, then verse four here, they are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless, wild living, and they heap abuse onto you. Um, uh, it's... How do you guys see that? So, so you, you're, you're in your past, you now have seen the suffering of Jesus. You see living in the cross of Jesus means that we will encounter those things. And Peter's trying to reconcile that now. And he says, you used to do all these things, which I think are us living out our pride. You know, these things that he is mentioning, this is kind of how is Chris Escher language, you know, debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, detestable idolatry. That's kind of us living out a life un, uninhibited. And, um, and so, and then he says this, and this is what I want you guys to talk about. They are surprised, those people that do all those things, they are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless wild living and they heap abuse upon you. How do, how do you kind of read that? How do you, how do you read that? Well, I like my version. Yeah. But you don't have to give an account to them. Uh -huh. uh, you don't have to give an account to them? Yeah. So, Cheryl, Cheryl, you had your hand up. By the way, my mind moves to Joseph as well. Okay. Because I feel like he is explaining to them all these are reasons that you are what you are now. Yeah. Back. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I also think, you know, Peter was there, and Peter was scared enough to deny Jesus. Peter was there when all the people were yelling for the insurrectionists, Barabbas, right? They're, they were yelling, we, we want the power, we want the glory, we want to kick out the people that we don't like, you know, we want, we want all of this stuff. He's yelling for all that, and Peter was sitting back, and someone's like, yeah, you were with Jesus. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't, right? And so he sees how people all, all of a sudden had groupthink you know, uh, ideas. And, and I think he's, he's probably thinking that. And like, we used to live for all these things, debauchery, reckless living and all that stuff. And when you didn't join them, these people, they immediately turn on you. An outcast. You're, a, you're, an, you're an outcast. And, and like that, and you can see how they turned on Jesus. And you can still, like, we still have these things that happen today that, that, Get, go through there. I mean, I mean the easy easy ones that we can point out is are, bullying are, in school. Is what bullying in school? Bullying. I I I was thinking like public figures like like MLK Jr. You know, like that's like like that. You know, he was changing things, and punk, right? Like you know, like nope, done. Yeah, you know, like that's you, you keep going on in the past, and that often that often happens, you know? And, um, but, but you have that happening in school too, where we're to go back into bullying, like what, and I know that's important to Cheryl too, or the bullying in school is um, 
when when people see that their strength is their only asset, when their power is their well, only yeah, asset. When you don't conform with a group. Yeah. Yeah, and you get pushed out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a good way of putting it when you're not conformed to a group. That that's because that that then it's real easy for us to push people that happens in churches a lot. You know? And that's the challenge of when somebody is not conforming to the thing to still be loving and caring. That's that's a diff, that's a difficult thing. That's some of my friends have had to deal with difficult stuff like that this last year. So let's see here. Someone's phone's going off, I think. <laughs> like that's so. Um, Taking away from getting them out of the Mimi hunt. Yeah, uh, getting the out of the what? Mimi. Oh yeah, the me. Yeah, like just thinking about themselves. Yeah, yeah. So so, and I think that's kind of what that's what that Old Testament idea of the sacrificial system and bringing into purity was it's like thinking it's like okay i've been made free now and i think that's what you're queuing on now and that that's what baptism does for us and this is what this is what peter's talking about so let's continue on um let's see here uh, verse five but they will not have to give an account of him who is ready to judge the living and the dead so they don't want to listen to to, to the G, to to the Jesus, right? For this reason, the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so they may be judged according to the human standards in regard to the body, but live according uh, to God in regard to the spirit. Um, he is saying very confusing things right there, like preaching to the dead and all that stuff. We talked about this a little bit last week. That's like the Apostles' Creed when we said Jesus. Uh, descended into hell and all that stuff. We get all that from this area, some of some of verse of chapter three and this part of chapter four. We get that part of the creed from this area. It's very confusing. I don't really quite know what to do it. But what Peter's trying to say, I think, is a Jesus. It, Jesus saves you like that. That Jesus. Jesus is bringing salvations, right? Oh, I thought it meant that. It that Jesus saved the ones that have already died, if they've been faithful. Yeah, yeah. Even if they- You out of here, Sally? Jesus. Oh, she's going to the bathroom, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, yeah. So, and I think he is, he's trying to show that Jesus' salvation is a bigger set of hands right. than just what's in front of him, right? that Jesus' salvation is encompassing and kind of going around him. And, and that's, um, and many of you have heard me say that, that um, how, how do I put it? That, well, I can't remember how I put it now. I haven't had to say it in a long time. It's the COVIDs, uh, Never mind. But I'm big on the idea of that Jesus' all-encompassing salvation is going to be bigger than what we think it's going to be. Like that's whenever I think, it, well, here's how I put it. I remember how I put it now. Um, I'm very uncomfortable with declaring the limit of like, here's the line, no one is saved beyond this point. Like I, it's really hard for me to declare that line. You know, like that, that's, I, I don't like, Jesus has no more jurisdiction beyond here, right? Like I really have a hard time with that. Like that, so if you notice, my preaching and everything, never talk about it. Ne never talk about that. I try to give people stuff rather than... He has the whole world in his hands. He has the whole world in his hands. And then so. quoting, quoting that song there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you, do, you do, Cheryl, you do. Um, let's see here. So, so then he starts talking about the end, the end of everything. So the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Like, look what he's doing now. So he, he goes, we know the end of all this is, is coming. So let's love, let's love one another. You know, like, because love covers any of the wrongdoing that, you, that you've done. And I think he's, he's talking about your love for people. But I think he's also going back to that love of God of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection 
that he's, he's saying that love covers a multitude of sins. And by you connecting to that type of love, then you, you're offering that too. So continue to love. And, and that includes offering hospitality and don't complain about it. <laughs> like that's, they, um, I've, I've got a bunch of weddings coming up. And the biggest thing, my biggest point to a, a, a good, happy marriage is um, always make the other person look better than they really are, especially yeah. in public. Or you have to give 93%. <coughs> yeah. The other person has to give 93%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's, you, you, you give, like, make the person look better than they are. Usually your heart will follow your actions. And the last word is just one. Yeah, is that the last word? <laughs> they, um, each, each of you, all right, so verse 10, each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. Now, I've heard people take this verse out of context. What is the context? If you speak, you're using the very words of God. What's the context there? Well, it's love, right? Oh, okay. I yeah, it's I, the negative. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it's, I've heard people that have preached about this one verse and they take it out of context. It's like, you'll speak with the very words of God and you will let them know, like, like, oh, oh, you know, like the fire and brimstone stuff and pre, like, yeah, you will. But like, he's saying this in the midst of showing love and hospitality. And so you can tell that his thinking and what he understands of God is that God is one where love and hospitality are pouring out from him. So when you're, when you're speaking those words, uh, you're speaking those words of love and hospitality, that like, just like you are God himself. Uh, let's see here. So uh, let's see. Whatever gift uh, is faithful stewards of God's grace. Um, if anyone speaks, uh, let's see here. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things, God is to be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be glory, power, and forever and ever. Amen. So he's, I think this whole section from the middle of three to the middle of four is this whole idea of the reconciliation of God from this Old Testament idea of the sacrifice to the atonement, and then Jesus does it again, where, where, but we're now in our baptisms connected to, connected to a death like Jesus, and we rise up again, and we celebrate and remember that sacrifice, and our purity is there whenever we have the Lord's Supper together. So, so then we continue talking. In verse 12, dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. So don't be surprised when you, when you have to face crosses in your life, but rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of God and the spirit of glory and of God rest on you. Um, we'll continue reading. If you suffer, it should be not as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, notice what he's the Christian there. That's odd language. Um, Peter didn't use Christian like, like we did. This, that was, Christian was really used as a mocking word back in the early, early, um, early church. And they called themselves the way. They called themselves the way. So, however, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For in this time of judgment and being with God's household and if it begins with us what will the outcome be for all those who do not obey the gospel of god all right let's i've, I've been reading like crazy so um all this little section here about rejoicing and all that stuff remember when jesus said in the in the sermon on the mount he said he talked about all the beatitudes 
you know, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed, you know, those who, those who mourn, blessed are those who meet, weep, all those things. So they will be comforted and all that. So all these things that are backwards to our power centric, sinful understandings of the world. Um, all these things are backwards. Does anyone remember what he says right after that in Matthew? Does anyone remember what he says right after that? Because I think Peter's cueing in on that idea. It's very interesting. Right after the Beatitudes, all those things that are backwards. He, he says, he says um, so this, this is verse 12, and then I'll read verse 13. And verse, and verse 13 is the beginning of the next section. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay, sounds familiar to what Peter's talking about. Next, the very next verse. You are the salt of the earth, but if the, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the, you know, you are the light of the world. A town on a hill cannot be hidden, right? The, the, the town, that's when someone's going through suffering, I usually tell them two, two things because oftentimes you believe that suffering is going to go on forever, like if you lose a loved one or something like that. And I tell them, here's the truth about light. And this is what Jesus is talking about with the light, city on a hill type of thing. I said, sometimes it looks at, at, at in the middle of the night, it looks like darkness has completely won. But here's what we know. If I went out to the other end of our grass lot over there and I lit a lighter, just a small little lighter, you know, or if I turned on, you know, my screen, you know, like all that stuff, you would have no problem seeing that screen. And it may look like darkness has won over you, but the light, even a small little inconsequential light can easily and immediately conquer any darkness, right? And so it looks like it may won, but actually it's, it's this thing of weakness and, and emptiness. And so that's one of the things that, that, I, that I tell people. And, and I get it from Jesus here with, with the town being, you know, the salt and light. So being salt and light makes the world, you know, you're making the world better, but it's in this understanding of sometimes we may have to suffer a little bit, you know, in that. Sometimes we, we may go through these things, and it doesn't make the suffering good. It doesn't make, it, doesn't make the suffering good. It just means that we're, we are part of the cross-led movement of Jesus. And I think Ed Bach said it well. I've been praising Ed a lot, but he said the most Lutheran thing possible at the, at the, at the thing out there. Dedication. At the dedication. He, he said... He, he said, Barbara's suffering with her going through Alzheimer's, none of it was good. But look at what the good that the Lord has caused through it. Like that's, and I think that's what Peter's saying here. You hear it? You hear it? Like that's, that he, he is saying all, all of that here. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, so. Showing you how to kind of get get through it, and I think he's saying like, if you suffer but you're a murderer, or this is verse fifteen, if you suffer and you're a murderer, or you know, or another criminal, or a meddler, or something like that, like, yeah, yeah, like that's you're causing other people's misery and, and all of that. But if you suffer because you are a Christian, remember that's an insult back then. Christian was an insult word back in Rome during this time. It's like, oh, look at those Christians over there. And, and so, and he, and so he, he's mentioning that word Christian. He says, if you suffer because you're just low down, no good, you know, Christ follower there, don't be ashamed, but praise God because you are bearing his name. You are bearing his name. Um, and he, then he talks about how God will actually be the judge. Does anyone have any, any thoughts on any of this stuff? I've been talking a lot today. Does anyone have any thoughts before we finish? Well, my last part to read from this is, so if you find life difficult because you're doing what God says, take it in stride. Trust him. He knows what he's doing, and mm -hmm. he'll keep on doing it. 
we always say, this is crazy, but God is in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot that doesn't make sense a lot of times. I know, anyone else? I, I, I thought oh, of late. Have I had you guys off this whole time? No, hmm. no, I don't think so. Lee's talking, yeah, but yeah, we Lee's can't talking, hear her. Yeah, Lee's talking, we can't hear her. Hold on. I was wondering why that, yeah. Ah, the live stream, I didn't want to hear from any of you. Lee, you can talk now. <laughs> um, line eight, when I read it, above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love conquers a multitude of sins. I immediately thought of an article I had read just within the last day about a young girl in Idaho who shot two kids in the classroom. And the teacher went out, saw the girl, approached her, touched her shoulder, slowly moved her hand down to get the gun. And then she hugged the girl. And she hugged the girl until the police came. And when I read eight, that was the thought that came to my mind because that would not be the normal reaction, I think. I would not have reacted the way she <coughs> did. Yeah. And, and this teacher was able to see through the, the happenings that this child was just very injured herself in, yeah. in the sense of emotionally injured. And she's, the article says the girl, you know, the girl didn't fight, the girl, the girl just responded to being held. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that, that's good. And, and, I, and, I, and I like what, um, what Peter says about the suffering in there, that, you know, don't, don't just, how do, how do I say this? Don't just fall into the trap of the suffering. You know, don't, that you're just like, oh, woe is me. Like, this is the, the worst, the worst. I mean, lamenting is fine. Lamenting is fine. But um, I think that's what he's saying, like, if you suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed, but praise God that you are bearing, that you're bearing his name, that you, that you are bearing the cross, you know, like that's, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, that, that's, I'm not saying don't lament and all that stuff, like that's, that's a very big tradition there, but I think that's kind of what, what Lee's kind of talking about, like, you know, that, that lady decided to, to show love, you know, to act, act out in that, in that love for, um, someone that was obviously troubled, right? Yeah. She said, I hope that pray for her and I hope that they get her help. Yeah. She pointed out how there was so much need for uh, yeah. mental illness. So, like, that's, um, that's kind of what this sermon's about a little bit this week. Um, it's, 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 um, it's called a physically empty, but it's like empty words that versus physical, physical, physical action. And so like, <laughs> that's, that's a good, it's a good example there, you know, where she was, she was leading with, with physicalness and God leads with physicalness kind of going, going forward. So, uh, let's look at, um, verse 17 to the end of the chapter here for it, it is, for it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, what will, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to the faithful creator and continue to do good. Um, so let's see here. Where, what's, what's he quoting there? Okay, he's quoting 
Um, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 31. So it's hard for the righteous to be saved. What will become of the ungodly and the, and the sinner? And I, I think that that whole phrase there is he's saying that, that God is a much bigger tent than, than we're all realizing. You know, that, that's, that it's, not, it's not just like, oh, we're the righteous sitting underneath here. Look at how wonderful we are, like all that stuff. That, that I think he's saying that it's like, it's all a much bigger tent and, uh, and let's go out and let's continue to love and show grace and show, show compassion to, to the, the world around us, even if they are mocking you. And that's the hard part, right? That's, that's the hard part. That's, that's the hard part. Take it in stride. Yeah, that's, take it, take really it in stride. Mm -hmm. let, it, let, it, let it roll off your back. Let it roll off your back. The other thing is that, you know, it's easy to be judgmental, mm -hmm. and we have to fight that. I know that's one of my big things. I have to oh, it's super careful. hard. It's and, super hard. Um, because we've traveled, we've, we've seen a lot of family and realized they've had some lot harder situations with, with the COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, they were in our prayers every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, that's, and, and that's what's... And, and that's that's what's difficult. It's it, it, it's it's difficult to to get through this, and that's why that's why the, the, that's why I say that the cross the cross in and of itself isn't good, right? It's a place of suffering, but through that sacrifice, we were brought purification of sins. We're brought forgiveness. We're brought through, and so we may face. The cross of Jesus in our own life in many ways, and it could be multitude of things, and um, you know that you're just living that way, living that way. But know all the more. Let's see if we can quote Peter real quick. Um, that that you that you are blessed, and that the Spirit of God rests on you, type of thing. That even even we go through those things. So. Um, but yeah, it's that's. Does anyone have any kind of last last comments before we finish up for today? And and next week we will finish up the book or the letter to First Peter. Does anyone have anything? So, so for me for me to close it all up, we we see that Peter, who once abandoned all suffering, now almost embraces it embraces it and and says that we are taking on the mantle of Christ but like you you never see him say that you got to seek out the suffering or anything like that you know like that's he says it'll just come it'll come on to you and if it does you'll be able to persevere because we know that Christ persevered and we and he has connected himself to us as we go forward there and so because he's connected to us in love so that we know that we are never lost or anything like that, we can go out with that same spirit into the rest of the world. And, uh, and that's good news. And we're able to give that good news um, away. So that's, I think that's kind of what Peter is saying here. <coughs> yeah. But it's great. Great having everyone here today. Thanks for joining in. Um, with everyone online. Sorry, I had you muted through most of the class. Like, I didn't want to hear from the, I didn't, I didn't want to hear from the Zoom crowd anyway. Like that's uh, all that. I felt bad. I was like, man, the, the Zoom crowd's usually like talking like crazy, and I'm like, why? Why aren't they talking? And uh, it's because I had them muted. It's because I had them muted in the back. So, but uh, but it's great. Great seeing everyone. Um, here's a blessing. May God continually richly bless and keep you that you would know that he has always loves you and that no matter what you go through, that you will never be forgotten in, your, in his son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. So remember Bye. class, class next week, then two weeks off because I will be doing everything in two weeks. I don't know. I'm going on vacation. I am going on vacation. I, I am going on vacation. Again? Am I going? Oh, uh, no, no, no racing, no racing. I'll, I'll, I'll still, yeah, yeah, I'll watch it. So I'll be, I'll be around.
some some of it. I my family moved my vacation to the first week of June, and I had two weddings scheduled. Are you get, doing the weddings here or someplace else? Uh, Hutchinson Island and Fort Pierce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like that. <laughs> like like that's. And so I was like, ah, like over there. So it, it's it's fine though. It's fine. Weddings, weddings have so much stuff, and generally I just have to show up, and so and do my I thing. Say a few words. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> like, I have a question. You? I, I noticed that there's somebody else on the bottom of the screen. Uh, yes, yeah, Dwayne. Oh. Dwayne. Right. Dwayne. 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 Do I know him? Uh, yeah, he's been coming. He's in the first service. He's been sitting right over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Early service. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. He's been he's been sitting right over there he in the wasn't first service. Wearing his glasses, and I think yeah. he wears glasses. Yeah, his his wife is homebound, oh. and sometimes they have caretakers coming in and out, so he has to get up and 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 do something like that. You got you got Lee muted again. Well, she mute. She's got control of herself. <laughs> oh, she control. That's me, Judy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, turn yourself she, off so nobody knows she's got, what you're saying. She's oh. got control of herself. She's got control of herself. Good for but. you. <laughs> but this this is working pretty good, though. I've got a pretty good setup going on in here right now. We just had to let you know that we are back. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Midge and Ed and Lee and Jean, you had no problem, like, hearing the room. It wasn't overwhelming or anything, right? No. Right. Good. Oh, good. 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 That's that's that little bit of yeah. magic right there. You're done good. Don't change it. Don't yep. change it. What? All right. I know we have to see what we, we may we may continue doing it like this, but um we gotta we gotta figure out this this works pretty good. Everyone can kind of see each other pretty well. And so we'll probably keep doing this. So anyway, it's good seeing everyone. Take care all. We'll see you. Have a good week. See you next week. Bye, folks. Have a bye good bye. week. Bye. Let's see how we get out of here. Here we go. Leave. Leave. How are you? Better than I <laughs>